Today I'll go over three ways of increasing your credit score fast without risking going into debt or needing good credit to begin with. Good credit is really important for many reasons. Lots of people have not so great credit and maybe it's not your fault, maybe it is your fault. That's okay, don't worry about it, we can fix this. Credit cards are a really common way to build credit, but for lots of reasons, many people don't want to use credit cards. That's fine, you don't have to use credit cards to build credit. My name is Kate Moody, you can call me Ms. Moody. I am your money librarian here to help you outsmart your money so that you can save more, live better, and reduce financial stress. Or I was filling my fountain pen earlier, so my hands are like, they've got a lot of ink on them right now. Click the like and subscribe button so that you can get all my yummy money tips. Librarian money, yep, yum. Number one, first thing you can do, you can get a credit builder loan. This is a loan that actually doesn't put you into debt because it is a loan in reverse. Normally, a loan is when a bank gives you money and then you have to pay them back that full amount plus interest over a certain time period. With a credit builder loan, they don't give you the money, they just put money into an account and it's like a few hundred bucks to a thousand dollars and then you pay them back as if they had given you the money at the end of the lending period you get all the money from that account so you are paying interest and potentially fees you do want to ask at more than one credit union or bank and credit builder loans are like gandalf they go by many names, but if you walk in and you talk to them a little bit, say, I'm trying to build my credit, I'm looking for a credit builder loan, they might try to push a personal loan on you. That is something different. Go to a credit union. This is important. You must, must, must pay on time. Otherwise, you're actually paying the credit union to hurt your credit. Hi, my name is Kate. I'm here to get a credit builder loan that I don't pay on time. So that way I pay a lot more in interest for all loans in the next few years. That's a bad deal. Don't pay for that. You can set up automatic payments so it'll automatically pay it for you. And the only risk is if you're not sure if you'll have that money in your checking account, it might overdraft. When you're shopping around, again, ask at a few places because they're all gonna have different fees, different interest rates, different lending periods. And you wanna look for the one with the lowest fees and interest rates and a long time period to pay it back. Because the more times it shows up in your credit report that you paid something in full and on time, the higher your credit score will go. You're creating proof on paper and that is what is important here. Number two, you can get a secured credit card. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. You said that I wasn't gonna have to take out a credit card, I didn't have to deal with credit cards and I wasn't gonna get into debt, so why are you telling me to take out a credit card right now? Good question. A secured credit card is different than a regular credit card because a secured card, what happens is you go to your bank or credit union, you give them a certain amount of money, let's say 500 bucks, and then they give you in return a credit card with a $500 limit. So at any point, the card could be paid off because you've already paid for it. The only real risk with this one is if you aren't paying it in full every single month, you'll get charged interest. I do not want you paying interest on it. You will use this two-part system. One, you will set up automatic payments when you get that card. Two, you're gonna charge $10 a month on that card. That is it. We wanna keep your usage rates low and we wanna make sure that you're paying on time. This does both of those things. With the automatic payments, you're paying on time and with such a low usage rate, you're showing that you're the kind of person who doesn't actually need to borrow money. 10 bucks a month, once a month, go get yourself a coffee and a breakfast burrito. Once a month, go buy yourself a nice six pack. It's kind of like a, a brigadoon of cards, but instead of a town in Ireland, I think that was Ireland, might've been Scotland, I don't remember. Instead of a small town that only shows up one day every hundred years or whatever it was, your credit card only shows up in your wallet once a month to buy $10 worth of stuff. And you know what? Frankly, a pretty good idea would just be like, if you've got a subscription to Netflix, Hulu, whatever, just set it up so that you're paying for that one subscription through your credit card. That way, everything is automated. 
then go hide that card in a drawer. You shouldn't risk overdrafting because it's such a teeny amount that you're taking out. You should always be able to cover that in your checking account. If you can't cover 10 bucks in your checking account, there are bigger issues at hand here. Now for the first two suggestions, remember you always, always, always absolute must pay on time. None of this. I almost always pay on time. No. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades as the saying goes. And this is neither of those things. This is your credit score. Close doesn't cut it. Any late payments and you are getting a visit from Krampus or worse, you're getting a visit from cranky me, like, like hangry me, who's been stuck in a line for a while. Ooh, you don't want to see me if I'm hangry and I've been stuck in a line for a while. So if you can't guarantee that you can make these payments, that's okay. You have a third option. You can become an authorized user on someone else's credit card. And like, I think of an authorized user as if you're taking a test and you're cheating off the person next to you. Cause what happens is they will make you a user on their credit card and then they pay their credit card like they always do. And their payment history shows up on your credit report, increasing your credit score. To get back to the test analogy, if they're getting the answers right, you're getting the answers right. but life happens and it turns out maybe they aren't getting the answers right. So it's possible that if something happens that makes them not pay their card on time and in full, that'll show up on your card. So just like in class, be careful who you copy from. Although I, I would like to think that the people who are into my librarian videos about money were the people who were like hiding their answers. There are people who were hiding their answers from everybody else who was trying to cheat off of them. When you become an authorized user, you are entering into a financially intimate relationship with this other person. So use protection. Make sure there is strong mutual trust. Ask someone who you are close with, who has amazing credit, like get proof that they have amazing credit. I'm talking over 770, 70, 780. And you know is really, really good with their money. When they add you as a user, you will get a card to use. Do not use it. Give it back to that person, cut it up, throw it in Mount Doom, do whatever, but do not spend any money on that card because it is their money you're spending. It'll take a few months, but their credit history will start showing up on your credit reports. Boop, 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 boop. Increasing your credit score. Those are my three ways of increasing your credit score without risking getting into any debt or needing a good credit score to begin with. You can choose to just do one of these things or you could do all three to get serious motion and whoosh, like shoot your credit score up like a rocket or a shot of adrenaline to the heart, Pulp Fiction style. Oh. Let me know if this works for you in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for more of my librarian approved money tips to help you outsmart your money. Cheers.